Hi, I was the last dinosaur standing, Corina Pacente. And I am those five to seven kilos that you gained during quarantine, Matteo Ferrari. And, and welcome, welcome to, to our, our presentation. presentation. In this video, we will be investigating the PM2.5 concentrations in two university campuses. One of them is ours, Wagner University campus, and the other one is Northwest Minzu University, which is located in Lanzhou, China. So we will first determine the air pollution levels and write that down in terms of annual and daily averages. And then we'll proceed on to determining which factors influence the most the air pollution in both settings. So now I know that we're all scientists wanna be, but still we would like to remind you one more time that PM2.5 are uh, particulate matter basically, like fine dust particles that are found in the air alongside with the uh, um, water droplets. And in particular, the ones that we are taking into consideration, which are PM2.5, they don't have a diameter larger than 2.5 microliters. And lastly, we decided to choose Lenzo as a comparison with Wachnigen because it actually serves as a good counterpart for the analysis to go on, and that's mostly due to its pollution levels. Moving on to the methodology, our, in our experiment, the, the data we had was collected from online databases and scientific reports, as well as our, our own measured data. The last ones were collected by using a sniffer bike sensor provided by the university for our last air quality practical. In the video, we will be then comparing the uh, PM2.5 concentrations of the last three days of September in Wageningen, as well as the ones for Lanzo. In addition, we will also be um, comparing the annual concentrations of 2020, and then we will be discussing about um, topography and industrial activity in both cities. Um, towards the end of the video, then we will be discussing how the governments are trying to solve the issue of PM2.5 particles in the air. Now we will discuss the results. So in our observations, we wanted to compare the last three days of September, so the 28th, 29th and 30th of September, data of Wageningen comparing to the ones of Lanzo. As it can be seen from the graph in the presentation, the uh, concentrations of Lanzo are much, much higher compared to Wageningen's. However, um, we thought that they might have been exceptions those three days, so we compared the annual averages of 2020 for both cities. And in fact, the trend still fits, uh, showing that Lanzo's concentration are much higher and they are approximately 86% higher. Sure, yeah. Moving on to our next slides, to give more context to our data, we wanted to compare the annual and daily concentrations provided by the World Health Organization with our own ones. And we can see from the table below that Lanzo's PM2.5 concentration exceeds the uh, boundary by a lot. And on the other hand, Wageningen's one um, stay within the boundary, except for the annual ones that exceed them by a little. To better understand why the concentration of PM2.5 is so much higher in Lenzo rather than in Wageningen, we decided to look into the topography of both places. We found out that Lenzo is situated in a narrow valley in northwest China. The valley is originally made by the Yellow River, which translates into low wind speeds and a higher probability that particulate matter will settle into the valley. On the other hand, Wachnigen features a open landscape and that allows winds to take away particulate matter and make it deposit on another location. Since we also wanted to assess how much of a limiting factor the unavailability of space in Lenzo's Valley is in achieving good air quality levels, we decided to put that in relation with the area and with the concentration of PM2.5 related to Wachnigen. In order to do so, we created a ratio comparison and we eventually came um, across the fact that if we want to have the same mixing of PM2.5 in both locations, the campus of Wachnigen and the campus of Lenzo, the campus of Lenzo needs to be 30% larger than it is nowadays, meaning that the unavailability of space in the valley is indeed quite a limiting factor in trying to reach good standards of air quality. 
In this session of the video, we will also be discussing the role that local governments have in tackling the emergency. So first of all, Lanzo has always been a major link in the Silk Road, and that has made it a industrial area. Indeed, Lanzo is home to more than 40 businesses and factories. That led over time to the poor air quality that now features the city. Um, in order to tackle the emergency, the local government since the mid-90s decided to conduct large-scale afforestation on the slopes of the valley that Lanzo is located in. And also, the local government shut down many industries that were highly pollutant, especially petrochemicals. In addition to this, in 2012, the China's State Council allowed the construction of Lanzo's new area. This is an 806 kilometers square area north to Lanzo, and that is supposed to allow Lanzo to still have an economic growth, but without um, polluting the valley uh, excessively. For what concerns Wageningen, it is not as much as an industrial area, but still quite some regulations have been put by the municipality in this case in order to address air pollution. So first of all, Wageningen stimulates the use of shared facilities such as buses or shared cars, for example. It also stimulates the usage of alternative fuels, such as, for example, electricity. In addition to this, we have many initiatives that are organized by, by the municipality, such as the um, Sustainable Homes Route. That is one initiative that is fit to provide spaces for citizens of Wageningen to discuss uh, various ways to make their homes more sustainable. And it's been running for seven years now. Uh, lastly, Wageningen also aims at better infrastructures in order to stimulate people, for example, to maybe use their bikes more so that we don't have the emissions coming from traffic. Well, going back to our original question, what are PM 2.5 emissions in Wageningen and Lanzo and what are the factors affecting their concentration in the air? So as our study has discussed and shown, Lanzo's concentration are five to nine times higher compared to backing in one, uh, showing that both cities are trying to solve the same problem, but at different levels of emergency. On one hand, Lanzo is trying to introduce new policies to reduce the emissions. And on the other hand, Wageningen is trying to prevent emissions. And we've seen from the discussion given from Mattel that uh, uh, topography is also another big uh, factor in uh, the air quality of both cities. For instance, Lanzo um, is in a valley, hence is uh, surrounded by mountains that prevent winds from coming in the city. Hence, um, the deposition of PM2.5 particles will be much higher compared to Wageningen, which is in a flat land area uh, where winds are constantly strong throughout the year, or mostly, and hence the mixing of the pollutants and PM2.5 particles, it's much spread out. And that brings us to the conclusion of our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you guys very much. And cut. <laughs>